Hello everybody, this is Krusty783 here, and with the end of the Ninjago storyline we've known for 11 years being less than a week away at this point, I figured it would be fun to go back and recap certain events of the story which have relevance in the final chapter crystallized. This video will be recapping the story of all of the returning villains in the Council of the Crystal King, including the Herald and the Crystal King himself. If you end up enjoying this video, be sure to leave a like, and with that, let's get into it. Not much is known about Pyfor's past, but the first we ever saw of him was him being locked away in the Serpentine Tombs after humanity's victory over the snakes in the war. During his time locked away, Pyfor resorted to cannibalism in order to survive, and devised a plan to take revenge on humanity for letting this happen to the Serpentine. After being unleashed by Lloyd, he assembled the five Serpentine tribes and resurrected the Great Devourer in order to take revenge, which didn't go well for him. However, the Great Devourer eating him did not kill him, as in Rebooted, he's revealed to have survived and has started working in association with the Digital Overlord. Pyfor ends up taking a shrinking pill in order to protect his new master, only for Zane to defeat the Overlord yet again forcing Pyfor into Cryptarium Prison. After this, Pyfor's kidnapped by the fake Anachondri warriors and used to make their human to snake transformation permanent. He then reveals to Garmin on a spell that will allow him to permanently banish the fake Anachondri warriors and is grown back to regular size by the original Anachondri ghost generals as a reward. However, Pyfor wasn't done yet, as he joined Yang's team of villains in order to kill the ninja on the day of the departed, which also failed. After this, at some point, he was taken into Cryptarium again by the new ninja and is now waiting to make his next move. King Vangelis was the ruler of the city of Shintaro, but that wasn't enough for him. He enlisted the Yopli to get in the skull of the late Hazador to allow him to become the Skull Sorcerer. Using these powers, he reanimated the dead to fight for him and enslaved the Geckles in the months, turning both races against each other by stealing their Blades of Deliverance. Vangelis used this race conflict in order to benefit from the forced labour of both sides until the ninja united the two races and Cole defeated him. After this, he was imprisoned by his daughter Vanya, although his story is not over yet. Asphira was an ancient serpentine sorceress who met Master Wu when he was a child, and after breaking Wu out of prison, was taught spinjitsu by the young sensei. She exploited this power in order to stage a coup on the current serpentine king Mambo at the time, however Wu used forbidden spinjitsu to correct his mistake. Asphira felt betrayed by Wu for not telling her that forbidden spinjitsu exists and held that grudge for her entire 1000 year imprisonment. After being accidentally released by the ninja, she used her magic to steal Kai's elemental power and then rampaged through the city to find the scroll of forbidden spinjitsu in order to banish Wu to the Never Realm. However, her plan goes wrong when her and her army are frozen and she banishes Zane rather than Wu. She's now being held in cell 1 in Cryptarium Prison. Mr. E was the primary enforcer of the Sons of Garmin on Biker Faction and carried out the will of Harumi the Quiet One to the letter. However, due to his failure to capture Lloyd once Garmin on took over Ninjago, he was executed. Rebuilding him may be a worthwhile idea though. The mechanic started out as a small time criminal working to keep Master Chen Noodle Empire afloat, but after the Second Serpentine War was locked away along with most of Chen's associates. For the next two years, he'd be stuck in a loop of breaking out of prison only to be thrown back in after committing more crimes. This is until he met Unagami. Unagami gave him everything he wanted in exchange for helping him to cross over to the real world from Prime Empire. The mechanic followed his instructions near perfectly but fled at the sight of Unagami's initial power. However, the mechanic's plans went awry when Jay convinced Unagami that what he was doing was wrong, leaving the mechanic back at square one. However, this wasn't entirely the case, as the mechanic's exploits with Unagami shot his reputation into the strategy atmosphere, making him the perfect person to hire for a villain team. After being orphaned by the Great Devourer's attack on Ninjago City, Harumi decided she wants revenge on the ninja for their failure, and idolised Lord Garmadon for stopping the Devourer. In reaction to this, she started the Sons of Garmadon biker gang and manipulated Lloyd into helping her complete her plans by pretending she was in love with him. After her act was up, Harumi revealed that she takes great pleasure in tormenting Lloyd and resurrected his father Garmadon. Harumi and Garmadon ruled over Ninjago City with an iron fist for a week and two days until Harumi was indirectly killed and Garmadon and Lloyd struggled to control the Colossus. Or so we thought. The Dark Lord slash Golden Master slash Crystal King goes by many names, but his most well-known alias is the Overlord. The Overlord was created as a counterbalance to the overabundance of light the first Spinjitsu Master brought with him to Ninjago, and as a result this caused centuries of conflict. His first war with the Spinjitsu Master ended with Ninjago being split into two halves. Garmadon later found the Overlord on the Dark Island and they worked together for a time until the Overlord betrayed Garmadon and invaded Ninjago. However, he was stopped by Lloyd. However, the Overlord's spirit managed to hang on through the technology that was created in the rebuilding of Ninjago City. He then combined the golden weapons and created the golden armor and tried invading yet again, only to be stopped by Zane this time. He hasn't been seen since this event, but where there is light there must always be shadows, so he will be back someday. Of all of the returning villains in Ninjago Crystallized, be sure to let me know which one is your favourite and why in the comments down below. If you liked this video, be sure to leave a like rating on it and share it with a friend if you found it entertaining enough to do so. Thank you to my channel members whose names are on screen now. If you want more Ninjago videos like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. And thank you so much for watching everyone, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.